and today I have a sew along step-by-step -step video to walk you through one of Green Style Creation's oldest and signature patterns, the stride tights. The strides are one of the first patterns that I made from Green Style a few years ago and I have made more pairs than I even know. I've made them for friends and for family. Um, I even made one pair for a teacher gift for the end of the year. It's a wonderful, wonderful pattern and I have put together this video so that you can watch step by step in the creation of making them and you actually don't even need to consult the tutorial. Once you've got all your pattern pieces, you can just follow the video and sew along with me. The version that I'll be making is the version with the contour waistband. I am including a gusset. There will be pockets in the side inserts and there will also be crisscross straps. So if you want to follow along with any of these steps, you can. As always, I've included hyperlinks in the description of the video. So if you are here just to watch one step, the crisscross straps, for example, just click on the information in the video and then you can click on the hyperlink and jump ahead to that step so you don't have to watch the whole entire video. Before you get started on the sewing, of course, you will need to assemble your pattern or use the projector version if you're doing that, or you can also have it printed at a printer shop using the AO version. You'll need to cut out your fabric. Um, for strides, you need fabric that is 75% stretch horizontal. That's the part that's gonna go around your body, around your hips and your legs. Um, and it will need 50% vertical stretch. To choose your size, you'll need to take a few measurements on your body. You'll need your hip measurement, which is the widest area around your hip and bottom. So you might, if you've never taken that measurement before, you might need to move your measuring tape up and down to make sure you find the widest area. Um, you'll need your waist measurement and you'll also want to take your thigh and calf measurement, which is included on the pattern. And you'll start with your hip measurement for that'll be your base size for your pattern. And then depending on what your legs and your waist are, you can grade or move the lines, curve the lines in or out, depending on what your size is. Hope you enjoy this tutorial sew along and have fun making your strides. I can't wait to see what you've made and I look forward to hearing from you. Have fun sewing. To make your strides, you'll need the following pieces. Two front pieces mirrored, So need two back pieces mirrored. To make the pockets, you'll need two lower side inserts. Make sure you cut out those notches. For the pocket version, you'll also need two of the upper side insert pieces. These will also have notches that you'll need to cut out, and they have that beautiful curved part that goes across the back, which is unique to the strides. For this video, we will be making the contour waistband. You'll need two fronts, and you'll also need two back pieces. One set will be for the outer waistband, and then one set will be for the lining waistband. I'm using the same fabric for both. Use a different fabric for the lining as it won't show on your stride tights. Another option that you'll see on this video is the gusset. Here you'll need two gusset pieces, and mine are actually pinned together. I have two pins on the back end and a single pin on the front end. We're making the crisscross cuff. Make sure you mark all of the dots on the cuff pieces. That is essential for when you're adding the crisscross straps. And these two pieces will be mirrored as well. You'll additionally need two pieces of fabric that are 19 and a half inches long by one inch wide. They'll become the crisscross straps and you'll eventually, in a later step, cut them into six pieces each. Okay, for 
for step one, we're going to fold over and iron down the top of the pocket piece, just at this notch here. I like to spray mine with some spray starch. The brand I use is Faultless, and you can find it at any grocery store. It helps to keep that crease and create a nice little bit of stiffness on that fold. It'll make it easier for top stitching. So you can easily see where to fold down your piece where that little angle is. You just fold it down and give it a nice good iron. Once you've got that ironed down, you're going to take it over and top stitch it using your favorite method for top stitching. I'm not going to show you this stitch, but this is where you're going to make that line. Now that the pocket piece is top stitched, we're going to take those pocket pieces. There you can see my stitch line, and we're going to put them on top of the upper side insert piece. Make sure to line up those notch, double notches. On one of my pieces I have the notch going outward right there and so you can see the notches lining up. We'll pin them in place and then we're going to baste around where the actual pocket is going to be. So now we're at the sewing machine and this is where we're going to baste. You don't have to baste across the bottom but I like to do it just so that it's all one stitch. It's easier than stopping and starting for me. I like to use a straight stitch with the longest stitch length, which is five millimeters on my machine. And so we'll do a basting stitch all the way down and you can end the stitch here, but I like to go across as well and then come up the other side. So you could just do the two sides as separate stitches if you want. cover stitch machine and we are going to stitch along the bottom of the pocket right where I made that basting stitch. So what I've done is I've taken the basting stitch out of that bottom line and now I'm just going to top stitch with my cover stitch. You can use a zigzag stitch or a twin needle here if you prefer. Once I finish my stitch I'm going to Pull the thread out from in front of the guide bar and then hold it with my finger while I then pull it out from under the needles and then trim it off. And there you go, you can see the basting stitches on the side and then the cover stitch on the bottom. of the side insert piece I'm going to mark a line one and a quarter inches from the bottom on the wrong side of the fabric. This will create a really clear guideline for where I need to fold the edge of my fabric up to. And you saw me just spray some more of that spray starch that is one of my ironing aids and hemming aids that I really love to use. So there we are folding up to that guideline and then we'll iron that in place. take those pieces over to your hemming machine of choice to top stitch at 5 8 of an inch. I'll use my cover stitch but you can use zigzag or a twin needle whichever you prefer. We have our side insert piece to which we've just attached the pocket and our back piece. We'll line them up with the curved pieces right next to each other. These are both with the front or right side facing up and flip that side insert piece on top of the back piece. We're gonna pin this all the way down. You'll probably have to pick it up around that curve. To me, it's much easier to pin when you're picking it up. It's very important to note that the side insert piece ends 3 eighths of an inch 
up from the bottom of the back piece. You'll need that extra bit at the bottom of the back piece to attach the crisscross cuff at the end. Now using a stretch stitch or serger, you will stitch down that entire seam line that we just pinned. Once you finish, you can top stitch that seam down if you like, it's definitely not necessary. And you'll want to press the seam over toward the back piece and away from the side insert piece. So on mine, the seam would go toward the burgundy back piece and that's where my stitching would be for top stitching. I'm going to attach the front and back piece at the inner leg seam. You can see right here that I found the nice curve of the crotch seam in the inner leg seam so I've just flipped that front piece over on top of the back piece and I'll pin right here. Give this line a quick stitch using a stretch stitch or serger. Now here is that inner leg seam that we have just stitched. Move it over so you can get a better look. My white thread and we're going to open up and see that nice center seam and this is where we're going to be adding our gusset piece. It's going to go right here at that center seam. So here's the gusset piece and I have put two pins on the back end and one pin over here on the front end. If you didn't mark it, the back end has longer sides right there so you can find it pretty easily. Make sure the back is towards the back of the pants and then flip it over with right sides facing the pants and you're gonna pin that notch right onto that center seam and then you're gonna go around and pin the rest of that oval to the pant. Okay, that's all gonna become one line. There you can see that nice curve there with the gusset in the middle. So we'll take it over to the machine and what I have done, which you may consider if this is your first gusset, is I've done a basting stitch right along that 3 8 inch seam line. So it comes off of the gusset a little bit at the beginning and the end of the gusset. And that's exactly how you're gonna stitch it on with your machine. So if you're using a serger like I am, the knife will cut into the fabric, into that seam allowance, and right until you get to the 3 8 inch seam allowance and you're gonna stitch it all the way down and then just smoothly come off with your knife. All right, so there we have it stitched right on. At this point, you'll take your other front and back piece, which have already been stitched together, and you're gonna lay them right on top of this piece which has the gusset already. Here's a good look at it. Here's that little bit of stitching that went past the gusset. So we'll lay the other piece right on top and we are gonna pin all around that curved center seam. The gusset will now be part of the edge of the, the bottom piece. Make sure to line up that seam right there where the stripe is because you really want that to be nice and smooth across the back. And we're just going to pin the other notch on the other end of the gusset will line up with the center seam on the other front and back piece and then you'll just go all the way across and line up the whole thing and pin it. And then you'll use a stretch stitch and stitch that one line all the way down. Just being really careful when you're going over that seam with the stripe because you really want those to match up nicely across the back center. You'll notice I'm doing a lot of adjusting and making sure that the fabric underneath is nice and smooth. We don't want to get any puckers in here. Let's 
take a look at this gray big piece we have now. Here is the back and you can see the nice back curve from, of the strides. These are our side insert pieces with pockets on both sides. And then if we move it over, we can see the front part of it. There's our gusset leading over to the front. There's the inner leg seam. And there is the front that's going to attach to the front of the waistband. So we'll take this outer leg seam and fold it up over to the other outer leg seam on that insert. Now remember, when you attach here, you're going to leave that 3 8 inch sticking out on the front piece. Pin all the way down. Ignore those notches on the side insert piece. Those were just for attaching the pocket, so you're not going to line those up with anything. We go it looks a little bit more like pants now those are the outer leg seams where we'll stitch and notice that that little bit of the front is sticking out the bottom of the insert you just need to stitch those two straight lines that you pinned using a stretch stitch or serger 3 8 inch seam allowance Then you can top stitch that seam if you want, again by pushing the seam toward the front part of the pant and away from that side insert seam. And then you'll be stitching over the pant. Here's a look at the bottom of the pant. You see everything is lower than the side insert seam by 3 8 of an inch. In this video you'll see the contour waistband high-rise version. I have a set of back pieces on the right side there and a set of front pieces over here on the left. And you'll want to take them and match them up into pairs with one front and one back together for the outer and then one front and one back together for the lining. I'm using the same fabric for both. But once they are paired with right sides together, go ahead and pin them. sure that your lining doesn't show if it's from a scrap that doesn't match for example you may want to trim off a very small amount about 1 8 of an inch off the bottom pieces of your lining waistband bring those pieces over to your machine and you will use a stretch stitcher serger and stitch up all four sides that you just pinned take one of your waistbands and turn it right side out. You're going to put that one inside of the other waistband. It doesn't really matter which one goes inside or outside as long as they're right sides together at this point. Line up those side seams. If I used a sewing machine I'll just press the side seams open so they're nice and flat but if I used a serger I'll push one side seam over to the left and one to the right. That way they're not super bulky inside of my waistband. Now go back to your machine and stitch all along the top edge with a stretch stitch or serger. I simply stitch all along the edge and I don't cut off anything additional, so my stitch is just a quarter inch seam allowance. waistband right side out. And remember how I mentioned the seams going opposite directions? Here's hopefully a better look at it. The top seam, my thumb is pushing the seam toward the right of the screen and away from me. And on the bottom, the seam is coming toward me, toward the left. 
And what I'm doing right now is I'm making sure those seams are facing the same direction all the way down to the bottom edge of the waistband so that when I pin them, they stay in the same direction. And that will make it so that the seams don't lay on top of each other, but instead they lay next to each other inside of the waistband. Now we'll baste that bottom edge together using a basting stitch, which is the straight stitch with the longest stitch length, which is five millimeters on my machine. prepare the waistband for pinning to the pant, we just need to find the front and back center of the waistband. We do that by lining up those side seams. Pinning them together makes it easy. And then we just find the edge of the fold and that's the center front and back. Now we'll bring the pant over. The center front and back are already marked on the pant. We just need to find where the side seams line up. And that is a handy dandy little notch that's on the upper side insert piece. You can see the notch on both sides. That is where we're gonna line up the side seam of the waistband. Now with the pant inside out and the waistband right side out, we're going to insert the waistband. Make sure you have the front part of the waistband with the curve lined up at the front part of the pant. So insert the waistband with right sides together and we'll start pinning by lining up the notch on the side insert piece with the side seam of the waistband. And then we'll line up the front center and front back. Then we'll pin all the way around. to baste my waistband onto the pant before stitching it on. This is nice especially if you're sewing for someone else or you're doing a new pattern and you're not exactly sure how it's going to fit. If you baste it on you'll use a long straight stitch. all the way around using your basting stitch and now that's a good opportunity to try on the pant and determine whether you'd like to add elastic or if you need to change the shape or size of the waistband at all and if you do find that you need to make any of those changes it's very simple to take out those basting stitches and do so then when you're satisfied with your waistband you can make your permanent stitch using a serger or stretch stitch or zigzag stitch on your sewing machine First step in creating the straps for your crisscross cuff is to attach elastic to this fabric piece that you cut out from the main pattern pieces. I like to run the quarter inch elastic through the thread tree on my serger and then just sort of let it hang in the back there. With the knife off, I will run that elastic through my foot. There's a little hole right at the front of the foot and that way the elastic is just guided perfectly along the edge of my fabric. This elastic that I'm using is the plasticky kind of elastic, just like the clear elastic. And I get it from wawak.com, that's W-A-W-A-K. Once you wrestle it away from your kitten, you'll want to start folding that elastic in to create the straps. So fold it over the elastic so the elastic is now on the inside, and I fold it past the stitch line so that there's a little bit of space between the fold and the stitch line, and then I'll fold the other side over. And that way the raw edge is not all the way to the edge, it's still gonna be in the back of the strap. 
So you can pin that all the way down or fold it as you go, whichever you choose. I like to pin mine all the way down and then bring it over to the machine. Stitch the length of the strap using your cover stitch, zigzag, or stretch stitch. Then you'll cut this into six even pieces that are each three and a quarter inch long. We begin with our cuff piece and you want to make sure that you have marked the dots from the pattern piece on both sides of the fabric. It's really helpful to make sure that you pin those straps and base them on in the right spot. Now here are the six straps that we've cut. I am always concerned about my cover stitch threads falling out before I construct, so I just did a tiny little straight stitch right on the edge of each piece. I did a short stitch length and then I'll just ensure that none of my cover stitch work comes undone. Pin your six pieces onto one side of the cuff. You want the nice side of the strap with the stitches that are going to be showing. You want those facing down towards the nice side of your cuff fabric. Check to make sure that they are pinned on just at the right spot and adjust if necessary. And then take it over to your machine and you're going to use a basting stitch to just baste that on. Be sure to hold those straps in place while you're basting and make sure that they baste right onto the correct spot. Now we'll take those straps and cross them over on the other side. I start with the second strap and pin it to the first dot and then I'll take the top strap and bring it over that one and pin it to the second dot and just go back and forth that way just sort of like how you'd lace a shoe. Add another basting stitch here just like we did to the first side. At this point you want to check all your dots and make sure that those straps are in the correct spot. And as you lay your cuff down, you'll be looking at the right side of the cuff and the wrong side of the straps. So we'll take the part of the cuff that isn't attached to straps and fold it up to cover up those straps. We'll pin it in place along that raw edge. At the very top of the cuff, the edges should meet. And at the very bottom of the cup, cuff, you should have very limited amount of space between the last strap and the fold. Now you'll do the same for the other edge, so you'll end up with two edges pinned and ready to be stitched. Now you'll just finish those two edges that you just pinned using a zigzag or stretch stitch on your sewing machine, or you can also use your serger. Make sure to back stitch at the beginning and end in order to lock those stitches and then just stitch straight down that edge using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you've done the one side, you'll need to do the second side.
Now you can flip that baby right side out and admire the beautiful cuff that you've just created. Taking a look at the bottom of the pant, you can see the hemmed insert and those two raw edges sticking out three eighths of an inch below the insert. That is where you'll attach your cuff. The straps will line up with the insert and then the raw edges of the cuff will line up with the raw edges of the pant bottom. Turn the cuff so that the right side is in toward the right side of the pant and then slip it right onto the pant just like so. And then we'll just start pinning right along at those two edges. If you haven't top stitched your insert seam allowance down, just make sure that you fold it back when you pin it onto the cuff. the sewing machine now ready to stitch on that cuff and here's a quick little view of what I was mentioning about the seam allowance on the pant see how that's folded back you want it to be folded back like that so you have a nice finished looking edge it'll be folded back automatically if you've top stitched it that's just in case you haven't so I like to use a zigzag or stretch stitch on my sewing machine during this portion. I'm actually using a zigzag with narrow width of one millimeter and a stitch length of two and a half millimeters. Make sure to line up those edges nice and cleanly and you'll start stitching just under the bottom strap. Go all the way around using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Here's how it'll look once it's done. You can see my back stitch at the beginning, 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around, back stitch at the end, flip it right side out, and it's like you've done a little bit of magic. Isn't that beautiful? Did it go I hope you really enjoyed making your green style strides please let me know in the comments you can also tag me on Instagram I am at so casually chic and use the hashtags hashtag so casually chic sew along hashtag GS strides and hashtag green style strides you can also tag me in the green style group on Facebook where I am Cynthia Solis Hendrickson and use the same hashtags I can't wait to hear from you Thank you.